Welcome to Tagami Vision. I'm Phil Tagami. With us in studio today is Brian Rogers, who uh, very active, uh, up and coming member of our community. Uh, in the recent shows, we've been talking a lot about uh, public safety and crime and things that we need to do to address some of the issues in Oakland. And number two, uh, with our crime discussion, has always been education. And Brian has been a leader. Uh, in our community dealing and addressing these issues of education. Brian, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Phil. Uh, you had worked um, for some number of years now on a program called uh, Suspe Expect Success. That's correct. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Expect Success was an effort that came out of uh, the bankruptcy of the Oakland Unified School District. And what it was was basically transforming the district into one that was more efficient, with better systems, um, that would create more resources going into the classrooms. Um, so for the last four years, the district um, has been planning and, and starting to implement this process, um, which would in, in turn hopefully create better student outcomes in the long run because the resources would go to the classrooms. Um, so we've, uh, we've worked, our, our family foundation has worked to uh, fundraise for this pro process. Um, we've, uh, we've fundraised over six million dollars locally from local wow. businesses and philanthropies. Um, and that in turn has helped us uh, gain some partners in the national philanthropic world, um, which has in turn brought in about uh, $40 million for this project. So if I understand, it was the Gates Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, the Broad Foundation. That's correct. And also a group called the S Full Circle Fund? Full Circle Fund helped to implement and fundraise. Um, and then Michael and Susan Dell Foundation also uh, brought in a lot on the technology side and the, and the data warehousing. Um, that allows us to clean our data and, and, and know exactly how our students are doing. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now, you're b born and raised here in Oakland, aren't you? Born and raised in Oakland, lived here my whole life, uh, didn't go very far for college, went to Cal Berkeley. Um, go so Bears. I, I, love this, I love this town. I, I know that this town has so much potential, and, and I think the potential lies in our, in our youth. And uh, we need to be able to educate them at a very high quality level. Um, for everybody, um, from the hills to the flatlands. So your interest in education wouldn't have anything to do with the fact that you're a new father, would it? Uh, it definitely plays a part, yeah. You know, I, uh, I have a six-month-old son now, James, and it definitely changes your perspective and makes you think about where he's going to be educated. And, and, and I want him to be able to go to a school that, is, uh, that, that, that promotes 21st century learning. You know, we need to make sure that our, our kids are ready and, uh, and prepared um, for the jobs of tomorrow. You know, we have jobs being created now that didn't exist three years ago. Nanotechnology, you know, cancer research, you know, just things that we wouldn't even imagine. And right. we need schools to prepare kids, my kid, for, for, for those tasks. We certainly do. I, I was recently reading where the dropout rate now in Oakland is projected at about 56%. So we've crossed that 50% threshold. Uh, yeah. And some of the questions that come into play are, how do we recapture some of these students and give them a second chance, um, at least with a uh, high school equivalency, mm -hmm. uh, so we can, in essence, divert some of these young people uh, from lifestyles that may not exactly uh, be the best for a healthy society. Mm -hmm. uh, what efforts do you think the Unified School District can do to increase uh, kids making it through their four years of high school? Yeah, we, we need to create high schools that engage students in their learning. Um, today, when we're losing our, our budget, um, resources are being cut, and we're cutting things like arts, like music, um, things that keep kids engaged in school. Um, we need to promote those types of uh, activities so that we keep those kids in school. Um, kids aren't going to come to school if they're going to be filling out worksheets for English and math. It just doesn't engage. We need to make sure that they're learning um, skills like critical thinking, um, things that are going to actually solve problems. Um, as opposed to just filling in the blank and, and, and asking them rote memory type questions. Um, we need to challenge the kids, you know. You have uh, some background as an educator as well. Yep, I, I was a teacher uh, up at Bishop O'Dowd High School. And that was my alma mater, and uh, I'm, I'm still on the board of, educa uh, board of Regents up there as well. Wow, how long yeah. did you teach? I just taught for one year, um, and then the uh, opportunity to, to be the executive director of the foundation came up, and, and, I, and I jumped at that because I felt I could, I could kind of uh, spread, spread my knowledge and, and go deeper into the problems all over Oakland and, and all over education and, and try to help solve those problems. So you're getting ready to run for the uh, District 1 school board seat. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the school's been through, you know, the school district's been through some challenging times. Mm -hmm. um, so y you see the opportunity to provide some stability 
as uh, the local uh, jurisdiction gets more control. Yeah, you know, I I see uh, the District 1 as, as a microcosm of, of Oakland. You know, we've got the Hill Schools, we've got the Flatland Schools there, and w what we see is that the success comes from those schools that can engage the parents, the success comes from those schools that has great leadership. And I really think that that's what we need to do is we have 106 schools here in Oakland. We need to find 106 of the best principals to create that change that is needed, um, that, that, that creates the culture of success um, and, and allows our kids to better student outcomes. So I think we have some of that in District 1. Mm -hmm. um, I think we, we have some of, the, some of the problems in District 1 as well. And, and I've, I've been working the last uh, four and a half years it, all over Oakland. Um, and so I've seen the issues in West Oakland. I've seen the issues in East Oakland. I've seen the issues in the Hill Schools. Um, I, I feel I have a comprehensive knowledge of, of everything that's going on in Oakland. And, and I see that we need some very, very innovative change. Um, we can't let the st standard quo happen because we are one of the worst performing school districts in California and the United States. Well, it's interesting you say that. One of the things that gave birth to a charter school movement in Oakland were low test scores and poor performing schools and um, interesting there seems to be two camps one of the charter school variety mm -hmm. and one that are really anti-charter school uh, and I've been trying to keep an open mind in this issue is that I've uh, was a somewhat a product of the local Oakland schools mm -hmm. but I'm a big supporter of charter schools mm -hmm. and parents having that choice you seem to be in the same camp I am in that you've kept an open mind helping Lighthouse Charter School and other schools mm -hmm. as well as being on the front lines of reform at the district side. That's right. How do you see this, these worlds coming together now uh, when we look at the Unified School District and the role that charter schools play? Yeah, we, we need to uh, take the best practices from both sides. Um, you know, I, I do believe that there is innovation and entrepreneurship in charter schools that is allowing change to happen in the public school system. Um, and we need to take those innovations and, and, and bring them to the district. Um, things like direct funding for schools. You know, charter schools get their funding directly to their office, and it doesn't go through a bureaucracy. Why can't better performing schools have that kind of direct funding so that we're not taking a cut off the top and making sure that the money gets into the classroom? Um, you know, I also believe that there are, um, there are some uh, very positives about principals that are able to hire and fire their own teachers. Um, I don't know of any other organization where someone is told to, uh, to be held accountable for their outcomes, but they're not able to, to gather their own team around them and, uh, and, and pick who they want to be leading the charge with them. Um, it, only in education does that happen. Um, so I, I, I really truly believe that there are, there's room for both charters and for, for public schools. Um, I think we need a portfolio of schools that are, are going to uh, are going to fill in the gap for all different learning abilities and styles. Um, and I think that uh, we can develop a better relationship between good charters. Um, there are bad charters, and we right. need to get rid of the bad charters, just like we need to get rid of bad bad schools. Um, we need to make sure that every school, no matter charter, no matter traditional public, no matter small, is a fantastic, high quality school um, in Oakland. There was a, uh, also, a, uh, for some time uh, here in Oakland, a, a program, um, a reading program um, that was, you know, really embraced by the former, um, really I should say, the director or head of the schools here. Um, it was, um, um, I'm, gonna, I'm drawing a blank down the name of this program. Uh, the Open Court? Open Court. Uh -huh. Tell, do, you know, is that a success? Was that a failure? Is it being continued? There's, there's defi definitely different opinions about open court. Um, it was very controversial when it first came out, um, but now that it's been implemented for a few years and teachers have been able to use it, um, some, some teachers and some principals are finding that they really like open court. Others do not. Um, and I think that that goes back to really... Um, site-based decisions? Site-based decisions, exactly. You know, empowering the principal to make that decision. Again, you go back to a charter school model, they can pick what the curriculum is. They are held to that same standard, right. and they have to teach the California standards, but they can choose how to get there. And I think for high-performing schools, um, I think we need to le get some of that autonomy to the principals so that, that teachers remain engaged in their profession. If you tell a teacher, you have to teach this, you have to teach it this way, and you have to be on this schedule, teachers aren't going to want to continue to teach. The reason teachers get into teaching is because they want to innovate, they want to spur the imagination of these kids. 
Um, and so if we are so rote in what we're doing, we need to, uh, we need to find ways to, to keep that imagination going. In the late 90s, one of the lines that was buzzing around Sacramento was, no more Cadillac prisons and jalopy schools. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the physical plant of Oakland Unified School District, uh, how, how does that stack up? Or do, are our schools in good shape? Uh, our schools need a lot of help. Um, you know, uh, putting 300 kids into any facility is going to create, you know, tough, tough facility issues. Right. And so we have a, a very aging infrastructure in our schools across the board. And I think a lot of the schools in in East Oakland and West Oakland are, e are even in worse shape than some of the other schools. Um, we need to continue as a community to make sure that we have the, the resources, um, continue to fight for bond measures that are going to keep our schools up to date. Um, a, a 21st century school is one that has a, a video projector, um, a DVD um, projector, uh, uh, you know, uh, whiteboards, things that teachers can use that are easing their teaching and things that kids are going to see when they go into the workplace, um, they're going to be using these same tools. Um, that's what we need in our, in our schools, um, as well as you know, air conditioning that works and heating that works right. and, and, and windows that open. Right. Um, and and that's, a, that's definitely a problem. Some of the challenges when we look at uh, other, we were talking about you know, bond initiatives, Prop 55, interesting enough, a number of schools in Oakland actually were awarded Prop 55 monies but found out that the cost to assimilate and go through the process of Sacramento bureaucracy mm -hmm. would end up costing them more than the grant that they got. Mm -hmm. So in essence, there was a negative benefit to taking the grant money because it put them through the Department of State Architects and the Office of Public School Construction right. and the State Department of Education, aside from any local mandated mm -hmm. uh, requirements for planning and building and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, is there room with the agenda that is before Oakland Unified School District to also maybe champion some reform at the state level? I, I, I think so. Um, you know, I think we can continue to push and continue to try to make our voice um, heard um, with, with our strong community voice that we have here in Oakland. Um, on the other hand, I think we also need to find ways to work within the system because changing the system is tough. But if we can find people that are willing to come in and, and, and work through um, the, the, the compliance issues that, that come up, uh, I, I feel bad because the, the re most recent state budget took $550, $550 million back that wasn't spent on California education. It was wow. unspent categorical funds. And so you're saying, how can we have someone who's just responsible for tapping into those funds and bringing them down to the school site? Um, the fact that those funds just get spent back into the general fund right. is just beyond me. Well, it's just, uh, there's a lot of food for thought there. Mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we need to do more shows specifically on education. Uh, I want to take a minute just to thank you for the a, a tremendous amount of work that you're doing for the community. Uh, you're really years of service uh, and really representing your family's commitment to Oakland in, in so many different ways, philanthropically, uh, with leadership, uh, and really I, I wish you the best of luck in your up and coming race and I'm sure that you'll do well. Uh, do you have a website or a place that people can go to get more information about I your do. campaign? It's uh, www.rogersforschoolboard.com um, and all my information is on there. You can sign up to volunteer and, uh, and see my platform and, uh, and uh, if, you, if they want to contact me directly, brian at rogersforschoolboard.com and, and they can let me know how they feel and, about the Oakland School Board and, or School District and, and what they think should change. Wonderful. Yeah. So election day is Tuesday, June 3rd. Tuesday, June and 3rd. Get out the vote, right? Get out the vote. Absentee ballots go out in May. So there it's even, even quicker than that. That's so, right. Yep. Well, you know, the fates always favor the prepared. Yep, that's right. Okay. Thanks, thanks for so coming much, on. Bill. Appreciate Pleasure. it. Yeah. Yep.